And since we're at one minute past, um, I suppose we might as well get started. Amanda is going to lead our class today because I don't know anything about Twitter and I'm just as interested to learn maybe as the rest of you. So I'll mute myself and hand it over to Amanda. Thank you, Stacy. Okay, yes, my name is Amanda. I have been at the Iowa City Public Library since June, just as um, our curbside service was starting. So I probably have not met many of you, but I might have seen your names on hold slips um, <laughs> for the past number of months. I moved here from Utah, um, big stretch, but I've got family in Chicago and Northwest Indiana. So I'm a Midwest girl at heart. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> um, I have been a Twitter user since 2008, which is a super long time in the lifetime of social media. Um, so I've seen it made a lot, make a lot of changes over that time, and I'm more or less a power user. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Da, da, da. And okay, can you all see Twitter basics and beyond? Okay, great. <laughs> um, so my first question, um, how many of you have a Twitter account? Do any of you have a Twitter account so far? Are you interested in um, like, how do you want to use it or what do you know about it? <clears throat> this is Glenn, I don't have a Twitter account. Okay, <laughs> so I'm that starting with- on fresh, more or less users. I'm sure most people hear about Twitter because it's been extremely popular in the political realm the last four years. Um, it, of course, it has been around longer and it's been used for a variety of reasons by a variety of people. Um, so we'll just, the point of this is to give you um, a good idea of how it's used, how you can benefit from it and um, different ways to access it. So, there we go. So what is Twitter? It is a network of individuals sharing opinions, thoughts, and information. Sometimes people, it initially kind of started after Facebook was started where you'd say, Amanda is, and I'd say, I am, Amanda is eating breakfast right now. And it was really, really boring. <laughs> and we've kind of evolved our social media since then. So Twitter is micro thoughts. It's micro blogging. Um, instead of taking a long blog article that could be a number of paragraphs, initially Twitter was just 140 characters, which back in two, the mid 2000s when it started was how many characters you could put in a text message. And that has also shifted. <laughs> um, so its concept is to be short spurts of thoughts. Um, I also see it as a news source. Um, initially, I was using Twitter for my news. It's a really great aggregator of news. Um, so I follow a number of news sources, a number of journalists um, who will push links, they'll publish links to their news stories. There's breaking news. Um, sometimes there will be um, reporters or even people like us experiencing a, an event live and they will post it on Twitter as they're experiencing it. Um, this is something I experienced in kind of a awful way a number of years ago during the Boston Marathon bombing. I happened to be on Twitter and was watching as people were reacting to that and finding out where my friends were. I did have a couple of friends in Boston at the time. Um, but there will be things like that that you'll be able to experience live essentially without having to watch it, but you get to read it. Um, so that's another way that Twitter gets used. Um, how can you use Twitter? Like I said, keep up to date on news or current events. Um, a lot of articles will get pushed out really fast before they get sent on newsletters or get published in on print. Um, so this is one way where you can totally stay on top of the news and current events. Um, you can network with people in a particular field. I'm a librarian. I follow library Twitter. There are many librarians I follow and many libraries I follow um, who will post about their programs they're doing or thoughts they're having or different questions and concerns they have. And a whole bunch of us can respond to the question or to the event. And then before we know it, we're all getting to know each other. Like I'm, I'm good friends with a librarian in another librarian in Boston or one in Florida. And we just get to compare notes about how we're dealing with the pandemic or what we're doing with programming or what new tools we're using online. You can promote a business or service 
Um, most people, I, I recently attended a workshop for entrepreneurs, people getting starting their own businesses. And one thing that gets mentioned is claim your social media sites, claim your Twitter, claim your Twitter handle. Even if you don't use it, it's, it um, gives you some legitimacy for whatever your business or service is that you have that social media account. You've at least put up a picture, you've claimed it, it is yours, you can use it if you want. Um, a lot of people will promote their events, they'll post about sales or coupons or new products. And this is one way to access a whole other audience. Um, connecting with your clients <laughs> or potential clients. Um, you can ask questions, they can respond to you. I know a lot of people have used Twitter in particular to reach out to um, airline customer service <laughs> specifically. It's like Delta, my flight got canceled and I'm having trouble. And that might be a faster way of getting customer service than if you waited in line or called a phone number. Is sometimes the person who's doing their social media um, will respond to you faster. So it's just another way to handle that. You can learn about new hobbies or interests or gain new skills. I follow a number of writers as well, and they will post articles about what they're doing with their writing craft or um, just new things they've discovered in their research. I also follow a lot of academics, so they'll post about their research and what they're studying and what they're writing papers on. Um, and so it's a way to just broaden your horizons a little bit by following a variety of different people. And you can share with friends and family. Sometimes it's just used as a very basic social media of, this is a photo of me, I am here at the Grand Canyon, <laughs> isn't this lovely? Um, or you're at an event and you're talking about all the different things you're doing, or you're at a conference and you can share what you're doing at the conference on Twitter. So it's a variety of ways that it can get used. So now we'll go over a couple of Twitter terms so you get used to the lingo. So a tweet, it's a message that is on Twitter with 180 or fewer characters. Initially, it started with 140, and then a, a couple of years ago, they doubled it to 280, and there was, oh, so much drama on the Twitter <laughs> for, oh, we're writing too much. <laughs> One thing we like about Twitter is that we can keep those thoughts really, really short, and so the, the drama lasted a couple of days and then died down, and we're all used to it now. Um, but a single tweet is 180 characters, and that includes spaces um, within a thought. We also call them updates or posts. So here we've got an example. This is a, a library dummy account um, from Margaret Mann, who's an Iowa librarian. Um, so this is a tweet, what books are you reading? And you can see a couple of options here. There's the little thought bubble and that's where you can um, comment on it. There is the retweet symbol, so you can share it to your followers. And there's the heart or like symbol to say, I like this. <laughs> and over here, we also have the share option. So you can send the tweet to someone in a private message, and we'll get to all these in a little bit, or you can email it to somebody or post it in a different uh, social media platform. A Twitter thread, this is a more recent development in Twitter. So while each individual tweet can be kept um, very, very short, our thoughts can be a little bit longer. Um, so multiple tweets can be linked. So you have the whole thought together and we call that a thread. Um, someone will tell a story and it's gonna take longer than one tweet. So they will use the little comment button um, to put the, all these thoughts together. So when someone finds one of them, they can click on it and find all the thoughts linked together so they don't have to search for them through your profile. It's just a much easier way of keeping your thoughts all together. And we'll see how that looks like in a little bit. Um, a retweet. So this is an example from uh, the library's Twitter account. Um, this was retweeted. You can see at the top that Iowa City Public Library retweeted it. So this is uh, Greg Schill wrote this tweet and it's, he thanked ICPL for their help and having the collection. So we retweeted that, we put that on our feed so our followers could see this tweet. And this is one way it used. And you can see at the bottom, it says, show this thread. So this tweet was the start of a longer train of thought. And you can click on show this thread and see all of the thoughts, all the tweets together. 
that were about um, following these pictures, these aerial pictures of Iowa City. A quote tweet is similar to a retweet, but you add a comment to it. Um, this is also called a retweet with comment. So we can see the dummy account I have here from Margaret Mann um, retweeted a tweet from the Iowa City Public Library about an upcoming event saying, I'm looking forward to this. And this gets used in different ways. You, it could be the original tweet was a question and you want your followers to see how you answer the question. So you quote tweet it and respond. So it shows up above the tweet. Um, you can give your perspective on a topic. If it's a news article, you can say, I was there for this, or this sounds interesting. You can lend your perspective on something, or you can just start a conversation. Um, it might be maybe a journalist posed a question, and maybe you don't necessarily want to answer the question, but you're interested in what other people think about it. So you can retweet it and ask, oh, this, this is interesting to me. I would like to hear more thoughts. Um, so it's just a way to continue a conversation using someone else's original thought. And here are a couple of others. So followers are people who subscribe to your tweets. Following or when you subscribe to someone's tweets. So you can log into your Twitter account and say you're following uh, the Daily Iowan. <laughs> you will see their tweets show up in your feed in, in, in the thread there, not the thread, in, in your feed um, and see what they're talking about that day. Also a mention is when another Twitter user is referenced in a tweet by placing the at symbol in front of their username. And we'll also see that in a second. Um, it's important to remember that when you at somebody, when you mention somebody, you at them, um, they get a notification that you mention them in a tweet. Uh, and sometimes you may not want a certain someone to actually respond to your tweet or know that you're talking about them. So that's something to be careful. Um, a lot of people will at celebrities for various reasons. And sometimes those celebrities will respond because <laughs> they get that notification that someone said something about them and they wanna say something about it. They wanna respond. Um, so bear in mind when you at, when you at somebody, they know. <laughs> and here we see an example of mentioning someone. This is one of our coordinators here at the library who got to drive the bookmobile and added ICPL's Twitter account to reference saying, Look, I get to, I'm involved with this other person, this other Twitter account, Iowa City Public Library, and I'm driving that bookmobile. Isn't this great? So that's one example of it. We also have a hashtag here, and you might also know this as the pound symbol. Doesn't get used that way much anymore. Most people are calling it a hashtag now, um, but it is that old pound symbol we saw on the phones. Um, and that refers to a topic, keyword, or phrase. So Sam here is using the library life um, hashtag, which is one that a lot of people in the library profession use on Twitter, talking about, oh, our Friday night is really dead, or I'm Sunday librarian today, <laughs> or just various things, various books and patrons and events and things that we encounter that a lot of people can identify with. We'll put the hashtag library life and other people can join in and commiserate or enjoy it together. Um, one thing that they get used for is like in conferences or certain groups will have a particular hashtag. Um, I know the American Library Association, they have ALA and then whatever the year is. So it'll be ALA 21 and it'll be their conference hashtag. So if you're attending a conference, they may have a hashtag for you to use on social media. And you can say, well, I really enjoyed this session or I really enjoyed the speaker and a picture of yourself and other people can find you knowing that you're attending this event, event that they're also at. So that's one way that hashtags get used. Another way they get used a lot um, in pop culture especially is with talking about um, TV shows and movies and they'll hashtag it. Twitter will frequently add a little emoji, a little picture at the end. You can see some of them in Sam's tweet here of a little bus and a stack of books, but sometimes those, um, Sam manually added those, but sometimes Twitter will automatically add one to a hashtag. I noticed this for the Marvel movies, especially. So Black Panther had a little Black Panther head at the end of it. So you could talk about your thoughts of the movie Black Panther 
and that little image which emoji would show up at the end of it. But one way it gets used is you, yes, you can talk about how much you enjoyed WandaVision, but if someone hasn't seen WandaVision or you haven't seen WandaVision, you can mute that hashtag so you don't see that hashtag. So people will refer to this as tag your spoilers. So you can hashtag the pop culture thing you're talking about. And that way, if someone is like, well, I haven't seen this yet, so I don't want to see any people talking about it until I see it after Friday. <laughs> so you can mute that for a couple of days so you don't see those tweets. And that's a bit more of a complicated concept. Um, and this is a beginner's um, workshop for Twitter. Um, but I just wanted to introduce that idea to you if that's how they get used. A direct message. This is also called a DM. Um, it's a private message sent from one Twitter user to another. And um, a lot of journalists will say, my DMs are open, which means that anyone can message them. You can limit who can message you on Twitter, direct message you. It could just be people you follow or, um, and other things will get sent to a separate inbox and you have to go in there and say, it's okay, I will accept this message. Um, you can block people if, they're getting to be too much or you don't want to hear from them. Uh, but there are a variety of different ways, security options you can set up your, uh, your DMs, <laughs> your direct messages. Um, I have left mine open. That has not been a problem. Um, I would say that's probably the easiest thing to do is just don't mess with it until it becomes a problem. And then you can go in and fiddle with it and say, only oh, people I follow, or I'm going to block this person. So this is also an example of what a DM will look like. It'll show who the user is and then back and forth of the different messages. I blocked out this particular user because they did not necessarily consent to be part of this conversation. Um, but that's what it'll look like without all the orange in it. <laughs> and likes. Likes is a feature that allows you to show agreement or appreciation for a tweet. Um, they used to be a little star and they changed it to a heart in the last number of years. Um, it's even if it's um, someone's having a really bad day, you can still like the tweet, but it's just showing, I understand what you're going through. I appreciate this. I'm here for you. It's kind of acknowledgement that you've seen the tweet. Um, other times it's, you really like whatever the piece of information was, whatever the comment was, and you can add that, um, add that like. One thing to keep in mind is your likes are public. Um, some of our, um, we've got a couple of celebrities who have, who either don't like anything and then they'll like one or two tweets and it gets loads of attention because <laughs> it's very, very important. They actually like to tweet um, so that people can, can see what you have liked. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, again, for me, I, it's, this has not been a problem and unless you're a celebrity, it probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, but just something to be aware of that anyone can access what you have liked. And, whoops, okay, so let's use Twitter. Um, am I able, did that switch to Twitter? Okay. <laughs> so this is the dummy account for our Twitter demonstration purposes, the Margaret Mann. Um, so this is what, it'll look like when you log in on a computer screen. It will look different on an app or on an iPad um, or tablet. This will just give you a basic idea. And I've got a couple of screenshots to show what it looks like on my iPhone. We are having trouble hooking up my phone to the screen. So we're just, gonna, I'll just show some screenshots and go over the information here. Um, so this is our home screen. And at the very top, it's got a cursor blinking with what's happening. This is where you can write your tweet. And so give an example. I have a stack of books for my weekend. What are you reading? So that is, so that is a tweet. Underneath it says, everyone can reply. This is a very recent development with Twitter. You can change who can reply to your tweets. Again, I leave mine open to everyone. It has not been a problem, but if you run in, if you encounter problems or you're worried about what have, what kind of comments you might get, you can limit it to only people who who you follow can respond, or only people that you at, only people you mention in the tweet can respond to it directly. So then that the option to comment is just blacked out, and they can't do that. So that's 
a thing to consider. You can also add in photos. I don't really have many photos to add. You can add in a GIF or a GIF, depending on what you call it. Um, it gives a bunch of really easy options for different emotions or reactions. Let's try reading, see what the options are for reading. And because that's what this tweet is about, we're reading. Let's add in Morticia. So you can see that and it'll run there. <laughs> you can add a description of this tweet. This is also really recent development in Twitter to make it more accessible for people who maybe um, can't see as well or have uh, things read to them um, because they are blind or, or can't see as well. So you can write a description. And that's called the alt text. So a reader that is reading to somebody who is blind will know what that GIF is, what that image is. Um, we've got other options here, it just blacked out, but this is also a poll. So you could ask a question and give a number of responses. This is more complicated. I'm just letting you know what those are. You can add an emoji and it gives us these little pictures that we can add. So we can put in a stack of books. <laughs> and that appears at the end of my of the question, what are you reading? And you can also schedule your tweet to appear at certain times. This is also very, very recent. Not something I use. Um, Twitter is meant to be pretty spontaneous. And I, I think for personal use, that's probably the best way to use it is to just immediately go ahead and tweet out wh what your thought is. Um, but for a business, you might want to space it out, say, you know, an hour before the sale ends, see what you can get, and you can set that to um, publish an hour before the sale ends. And then we hit tweet, and it shows up after a moment. There we go. <laughs> up here in the corner, we've got, when I hover over here, it says top tweets. It's kind of little stars or shiny symbols from cartoons. Um, you can switch between really popular tweets showing up and it will be out of order. It'll just be things that you like that'll just show up um, of what are the top tweets at the moment. Or you can switch to latest tweets. So instead of something that happened four hours ago, you can scroll through here and here's the Library of Congress tweeted 23 minutes ago and that's more recent. And then it'll, uh, 53 minutes ago. So this will be more um, in a chronological order so you can see immediately what's happening and then start to scroll through um, further back to see what's going on. Totally depends on your preferences. Um, some people who don't have as much time to devote to social media, which is many of us, um, would prefer to just see top tweets, just see the best of the best <laughs> and scroll through that for 10 minutes and then they're done. So that's an option for you. Um, over here, explore. So this is a way to see what is trending. What are the different things that people are adding hashtags about? Um, of course, people are talking about COVID and there's a variety of different articles that are um, trending right now and you might be interested in, maybe or maybe not. We can see what's going on in the entertainment world. This is one way to access news and see what is going on on social media. Um, this isn't something I use a whole lot, but I know some people pay very close attention to what is trending because they want to stay top of the minute <laughs> of what's popular right now. But this is where you can see it um, under this hashtag symbol. You can also search and we can search for what's going on in libraries. And of course we get the Library of Congress but we can scroll through and see what other people who are talking about libraries are talking about. So you can search a topic yourself up here. Down here, we've got notifications. So if someone mentions you, it will show up here. Um, this is an, these are various things like, I logged into the account on my phone, so it showed up here. This is something that Twitter does when you log into a new device that it's not familiar with. Um, so don't freak out when that happens. If you log into multiple devices on your Twitter account, it'll say, hey, you logged into a new device. Is this you? Um, it also set, you know, shows me that the British Library tweeted this thing that I might not have seen. You can click here 
little dots in the corner to see less often. Maybe you don't care about that notification, <laughs> but that is where um, you can find, sometimes they'll show up news articles that Twitter thinks you would like. Um, just being alerted of what's happening in your Twitter will show up here. Messages, this is where your DMs are, your direct messages are. Um, so we've got a variety there. Um, bookmarks is um, another option for you. If you like a certain tweet, um, like a certain Twitter thread in particular, you might wanna bookmark it instead of liking it or in addition to liking it. When it bookmarks, um, you can keep track of it and no one can see your bookmarks. They're just there for you. So maybe someone's telling a story and it's taking them a couple of days, which sometimes people on Twitter will do is they'll tell part one of a story one day and they say, okay, see me tomorrow for part two. And you can bookmark that so you can join the discussion the following day. Might not be something you're interested in, but that's an option. Um, lists is another thing that is a little beyond basics. Um, if you have a lot of Twitter followers, you can't, like I have, oh gosh, well over a thousand people I follow on Twitter and I can't see the, all their tweets all the time. So I might make a list of just the librarians and it looks like a couple of people have made um, library lists. So you just see people who are involved in the library world. So that's another option for you. And then down here, you can see your profile. And this is what people will see when they find you on Twitter. So you wanna include your picture. We've got a header image, what we've got up here. Got your name. You can have a username, your at name, and then you can be something different, um, especially now since so many usernames, popular usernames have been taken. Maybe your name is Sarah Jane. Well, Sarah Jane has been taken on Twitter already. So you might have Sarah underscore Jane 820 or something, <laughs> and but that's not your real name. So in the bold up here, we've got Margaret Mann. So you can put Sarah Jane, whatever. You just leave it Sarah Jane. This little uh, symbol right here at the end of Margaret Mann's name, that is a lock symbol. So if you make your um, profile private, so only people you know can see your profile. And that is a security option you can set. <clears throat> and some people choose to lock down their accounts if they have a tweet that goes viral <laughs> or they get attention that they don't really wanna deal with for different things. I've had, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some Twitter friends go viral. They made a comment and going viral means thousands of people see your tweets, thousands of people like it. Um, it could even go into the millions. Um, it's been ridiculous how, how often people can go viral. And it's kind of a weird term to use during a pandemic as well. People have noted that. Um, but when your tweet goes viral, you get loads of new followers, you get loads of people responding to it, and you just can't deal with it. <laughs> and you might want to lock it down. Or you just don't care for the world to see all your tweets and you want to limit uh, who sees your tweets just to a certain number of people. So you can lock down your account. So here I've got the list of tweets. Let me see Morticia Adams. Tweets and replies, things that I have, um, well, this account has responded to. So even if it's not your tweet, you responded to someone else's, that can be seen from your profile. Media that has been uploaded. So this GIF that I have uploaded, this old picture of a cat is uploaded. So it just shows um, photos and videos and GIFs that you've uploaded that will all be collated together. And then of course, we've got our likes. These are various things that this account has liked. So these are all things that can be seen by anybody in public unless you lock down your account. Over on the sidebar, um, this will show like media. They kind of put that together in a little block here for you. Um, accounts that you might like, that frequently shows up in Twitter's algorithm, just other things that they think you would also be interested in. And then trending in news sources will also show up in that sidebar. But this is again from your desktop um, computer when you're logging into Twitter, but this can be accessed from different places uh, within Twitter on an app. Um, so those are a couple of ways, it's kind of what Twitter looks like from there. Any questions so far? All right, well, we will continue to move on. 
to head back to the presentation. So we can all see Let's Use Twitter. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> So I took some screenshots on my phone. I use an iPhone, Android looks slightly different, um, but this is what the app looks like. So when I open up Twitter, and this is again, the Margaret Mann account, um, this is what the home screen will look like to you. Um, up in the corner here is that little stars or the sparklies, and that's where you can show latest tweets or switch to just top tweets. So that's an option that you'll have to switch on your own once you get into the app. Um, Twitter usually defaults to top tweets. And then if you keep saying, no, I just want to see latest tweets, it eventually learns to stay with that setting. Um, and then over here, we've got a little hamburger menu up in the top. And that will bring you to the sidebar of where your profile is and lists and bookmarks and topics. And you can do some searching and things from there. I just added these little stickers because I have other Twitter accounts. So I'm keeping those private. Um, so that'll show you how many people are following you and who you are following. So this is one way to quickly get to your profile and see what tweets you're looking at and access other lists of followers. If you just want to follow people in the library, so you've got your library list, you can quickly access it from there. And then again, from the home screen, you've got the little home button you can always get back to. Um, your messages and your notifications, the little bell. And then the search icon will take you to, you can search Twitter and you can see trending topics and you can search for certain keywords or people or users from that um, location. So that's what um, it'll look like on your phone or on your tablet from the app. That's what it'll look like. Going over some Twitter etiquette. Um, you always wanna give credit. <laughs> um, if you found a piece of artwork you like to share, you should find that artist's Twitter handle, and they usually make that fairly prominent on their website. You can search for them very easily. But if you tweet out a piece of artwork, you should at the artist. Or if someone wrote an article that you really like, you should at the author of the article or the book if you can. Um, it's just that's one way to network with people. And so other people can equally appreciate whatever you just tweeted out, whatever you shared. Um, the person who created it, who made it, can be the one uh, to get credit for it and get attention for it. Limit your hashtags. Um, in the Instagram world, people will use loads and loads of hashtags and hashtags that are, have misspellings in them and hashtags that cover loads and loads of topics. But Instagram is a different social media platform and it's used differently than Twitter. Twitter has a character limit. Um, so normally it's accepted to use maybe up to three hashtags, try to keep it to one or two um, of whatever the topic is that you're tweeting about. You don't want it, the whole tweet to just be hashtags because that's almost pointless. <laughs> you're not sharing anything. Um, so just be mindful of what hashtags you're sharing if you choose to use them. Follow people back. If someone follows you, do them a favor and follow them back, especially when you're new to the Twitter world um, and just getting started or want to get better with Twitter, follow people back. If you don't like them, you can always mute them. And that is a security option that you can turn on um, or unfollow them ultimately. Um, but the more people you follow, the more ideas you get to engage with and the more people who can find you. And engage, respond to people's tweets. Um, do a quote tweet and respond from there so people who are following you can see what your thoughts are. The whole point of social media is to be social. So make it a point to share a photo or share an article or share a fun fact um, a couple times a week just to keep your Twitter account active and people know that you are there, <laughs> you are using it um, because they will be more interested in engaging back and getting to know you and getting to know your product or your business um, or whatever you're trying to publish, as long as you're keeping it up, people will be more interested. Some pro tips to keep going. Add a profile photo. When you sign up for your Twitter account, um, it, I don't know, actually, I don't know anymore, but initially it was just a picture of an egg because <laughs> Twitter tweets birds. So it started out as a little egg. 
Um, and it was known in Twitter culture, you know, if you're just an egg, nobody cares about you. You know, you, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to use this platform. You're, you're a noob. <laughs> so I always add a profile photo. It does not have to be you. It can be another photo. It can be a graphic of something. Um, if you don't want to be as personal or want to be somebody else on Twitter, it does not have to be you specifically. Um, but just make sure that you put some profile photo up so people know that this account is active. Don't add lots of numbers to your username. You might have to add a couple. Um, again, Twitter has been around since the mid 2000s. So a lot of usernames have been taken. Um, but by adding a whole string of numbers, like more than three, kind of indicates that it's a bot account, a robot account. It's a fake account. It's created by a computer. It doesn't actually have a person behind it. Um, and those are not the accounts you want to engage with. They're, you, don't, you want people, you don't want a robot. Um, so for yourself and for other people, just be mindful of what your username is and don't add a whole long string of numbers. One thing you can do is you can link to a website. Twitter's profile allows you to link to one website. So it could be your website if you have one. It could be a blog article or a published article that you've written or your profile page on Amazon or whatever. Um, there are websites, I use one called Linktree and it can, it can be one link that shows up in your Twitter account. And then from that link, it links to a whole bunch of other links. <laughs> Again, this is a pro tip. This is not something that maybe not everyone cares about. Maybe you don't have a website. But when on Twitter, on your profile, you can only link one thing. And if you want to link to multiple, there are free services that will allow you to do that. Again, interact with other accounts. Be personable. Get to know other people. Follow people. Say you appreciate their tweets and comments. Tell a story on your account. And then at other people who were involved. The whole point of social media is to be social. <laughs> so do your best to remain active, even if it's only once or twice a week, just for a few minutes, scroll through, like tweets, retweet something, make your own comment, just interact with the other users. Be cautious of fake and parody accounts. Like I mentioned, some bot accounts will just have a long string of numbers or just be that little egg and they never bother to replace the profile photo. Um, some people will start parody accounts of celebrities and get a lot of followers because maybe that celebrity does not actually have a Twitter account, but people think they do. Um, one thing you can look for is a little check mark, a blue check mark next to the person's name. That means it's a verified account. That means Twitter has said this person is real. <laughs> a lot of celebrities and journalists and writers and newsworthy people will get their accounts verified um, to prevent these parody accounts from taking over whatever the story is or getting all the attention um, when it's not them. So just be aware, sometimes you can look, the name is misspelled in the username. You might have noticed that with the Margaret Mann um, account, that name was already taken on Twitter when um, that account was created. So Margaret is actually misspelled in our username. <laughs> so that's something to be cautious of, is if the, the name is misspelled, um, that might not be the account you're looking for. That might not be the person you're looking for. And another thing you can do is you can pin a tweet that promotes you. That, that's an option on tweets. Um, there's little three dots in the corner of each tweet. And if you wrote the tweet, you can pin it to the top of your Twitter profile to say, this is my favorite tweet, or this is the latest thing I'm promoting, or this is the tweet that made me go viral. Um, not an option everybody uses, but it is an option that is there. Let me go over, I think I went over all of my notes, yes. All right. Let's open up to questions. Do I need to go back to demonstrate what else you can do on our little dummy account for Margaret Mann or what other questions do you have? I, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you want to establish a Twitter account, you just go to twitter.com and it walks you through the process. Sure does. Yes. Just walks you through. And it's been a long time since I've created my Twitter account. So I don't know exactly what it is, but they are very good about walking you through it. So you do need an email. Um, they frequently will ask for a phone number. Make that your cell phone number if you can, because they will text you or alert you through that. You, I don't think you have to sign up with a phone number, but they like it for security reasons to make sure that you are you and you only you are uh, getting your account. But they do need a unique email address attached to your Twitter account. Yes. Okay. 
Um, and can you compare and contrast uh, Twitter with Instagram and Facebook? Instagram is kind of Twitter with pictures. Um, I, I can't remember exactly when Instagram started, but I, I remember that's what people would say is it's, it's Twitter with pictures. Um, so Instagram is very, very visual and you want to focus on those um, on the photo or photos that you're uploading and you can add loads and loads of hashtags so people can find your particular photo based on the location you were at and who's in it and, and a variety of different things. Twitter is more text-based. Um, you can post photos, obviously, and I actually have a service set up. So my, when my Instagram account updates, it will publish a tweet directly to it. Um, so whatever I publish on Instagram will also publish on Twitter automatically. Um, so Twitter is more text-based and doesn't use as many hashtags. <laughs> and you can link longer thoughts together can't necessarily do that with Instagram. You could post up to, what is it, 10 images in one post, and but it's images, it's photos. Um, so that would be the biggest difference. Facebook is a whole other thing altogether because um, it was kind of the mammoth that started all of this. So that is both um, the photos and the text. And that has turned more into, I think more people are using Instagram uh, Facebook for the groups that they form and being in touch with their old friends or family members. Twitter kind of opens that up to, I can friend somebody, I don't like, I can friend somebody, I can follow somebody who I don't know, but I'm interested in their thoughts. Whereas Facebook, you might not necessarily be able to friend somebody you don't know <laughs> to just follow their thoughts, but their Twitter page will be public and you can, you can see their thoughts from there. Does that answer the question for yeah, you? Yeah. Um, um Am I, am I understanding that with Instagram, your photos disappear after a certain period of time? There are two different ways to do that, yes. So mm -hmm. there is your, your feed, which stays permanent. And then they, within the last couple of years, introduced something called stories. And those do disappear after a certain amount of time. I think it's usually 24 hours. Okay. So those do act differently. So why would you do, why would you do that? I why would you have your photos disappear? <laughs> yeah, I mean, why, why would you, what, how do you make that choice? Um, I, I think it's, it's totally a personal thing. If you want it preserved, I think that's why people will post it to, directly to their feed, um, on Instagram, as opposed to making it a story stories can be saved. So, um, I know like at my last library used Instagram heavily. And so they would make a story that was around promoting an upcoming event and they would, um, have that story stay at the top of the screen for a week or two, just to promote that event. Um, a lot of moms I follow on Instagram will just have videos of their kids during the day and that will be in stories and that'll disappear after 24 hours because they have new things to post of their kids being adorable. Um, and that's usually videos. So I think it, that's still kind of being decided by the people using it. And I don't use Instagram as much, so I can't totally answer that question, but I think that's very much a personal choice. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions or any other thoughts or? Yes, I, I yeah. have a question. This is Glenn. Hi, Glenn. And, um, I'm on Facebook and uh, I'm, you know, family and friends. Mm -hmm. I would like to get set up on Twitter. Um, is there an easy way where you can find all your friends and, re and uh, relatives on Twitter? Easily? Usually, yeah. Um, Again, it's been a while since I've actually signed up for a fresh new Twitter account, but there is options. They will ask for access to your contacts and they can search phone numbers and email addresses that you already have in your phone and then find people there for you. Um, some people don't want Twitter accessing everything on their phone. So that might not be the option for you. Um, you can just search a person's name um, and see what comes up. Although for a lot of names, there are a lot of people associated with them. So that might take a little bit longer um, but there are different ways of accessing that, like you can search for phone numbers and if they've used their phone number to sign up for Twitter, then you'll be able to find them through there or their email address. Um, so there are different ways of accessing that. Yeah. And Glenn, if all the people that you want to connect with are on your, in your Facebook account, you could just do a Facebook post that says, Hey, I'm going to start Twitter. Here's my <laughs> Twitter handle yep. and I'll see you on there. <laughs> That is a way to do it too. <laughs>
Thank you. So Amanda, one thing that has sort of stopped me from getting into Twitter is a sense that there's way too much on there for me to ever feel like I'm on top of. Yeah. <laughs> and so how much time do you spend on Twitter? How do you kind of manage your time so that you don't get sucked in for hours and hours? I think that's a perennial problem. Yeah. Um, I have had my moments where I am on Twitter way too much. Both myself and my husband will say that. My husband has actually like backed off from Twitter because he does not like what Twitter has turned into. It is a very different social media platform than it was when I initially signed up for it. Um, it used to be a lot more fun, fun little things and tidbits and it has turned, it can be very political and very much current events and get really heavy, really fast. And you can get sucked into discussions and following people. My advice would be start small. <laughs> Don't follow too many people, follow a couple of, um, websites that you enjoy already, if uh, news sites or TV shows or celebrities that you already enjoy, um, and just keep it small initially. If your followers expands into the hundreds, maybe you do want to parse it down so it's just a list. So it's like, today I am only going to see what the movie stars are saying today. <laughs> I am only going to see what, what the news sites are saying. I just want to quickly see what their, what headlines there are. Um, I would suggest keeping it to a time limit and saying, I have exactly 10 minutes or I am waiting for my meal to finish in the microwave. So I've only got five minutes to scroll through Twitter. Um, it is, this actually gets talked about in the platform a lot about doom scrolling. <laughs> and that's where you're just, you, you don't stop scrolling. You just, your thumb keeps going. You keep taking in all the information and it might not even be great. It might not be positive. So that's why they call it doom scrolling. So it would be advisable. Just don't follow too many people and limit, give yourself a time limit or say, I will only be on Twitter for at three o'clock for 20 minutes while I'm doing this thing or waiting for this thing and then I'm done for the day. So that might be one way to approach it. Hmm. I'm having trouble hearing you. Hmm. <laughs> yes. So if you, uh, if you're following somebody, do they, do you, do you get a notification? Do you get a, a tweet sound? <laughs> when no. Somebody you can turn that off. You'll get a notification within the app um, that someone has followed you. Okay. So, but if you're, well, so if you're following them, are they automatically following you? Not necessarily. I, I would say, again, when you're getting started on Twitter, just getting started, if someone follows you, follow them back. Um, that's just a way to, to just start to engage. But at a certain point, you don't need to follow anybody. <laughs> if, if they, they're interested in your thoughts, that doesn't mean you have to follow them. Um, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the corporate account is very, very famous for only following seven accounts because they have seven herbs and spices. So they follow seven, like five guys named Herb <laughs> and two of the Spice Girls. So they, you know, some accounts just, they, they, they're not used that way. So like a big corporate account won't follow people or a major celebrity won't follow that many people because the account is used for them just to push information out. But for the average person, you want to engage and you want to follow people and you want to actually use it. So initially I would say, yeah, if you're interested, follow people back. You always have the choice to unfollow them if you don't like the information that they're pushing to you. Um, it's just more of a courtesy thing initially but um, that's your choice if you actually want to follow them or not. <laughs> and I think, um, Carol, is your question also about like what notifications would pop up on your phones, so, like the little red yeah. number or like a, an actual notification that says so-and-so tweeted with yes, the preview? The yeah, because yeah. you can, that's another setting <laughs> that you have to go in. You, it, it might initially send you everything. So when anybody asks you or messages you or sends a new tweet, you might get a push notification on your phone saying, hey, this is, this, this has happened. Um, you can turn those off or you can say, see less often, which I demonstrated um, on the Twitter account earlier. Um, you can choose to not get any notifications and just, you have to go to the app, you have to go to the website to see what has, what notifications or messages you have. Um, that might be a way to limit your time using 
the social media <laughs> is I'm not getting notifications. I will only look at it at seven o'clock. And if I don't see it at seven o'clock, I'm not going to worry about it till the next day. I was uh, probably other people have this question too, is that um, with my kit, with my children and their grandchildren, mm -hmm. I would be, that's, I would be more interested in communicating with them that way, mm -hmm. you know, for them to send photos or whatever. So do I, does a person need to let them know, but you, you establish your Twitter account mm -hmm. and then you just put their, their contact information, email or whatever. Search for their name. You can search for their email um, or let, them access your phone to find that information, say, hey, you might know these people based on the contact information in your phone or post to another social media to say, I'm also on this platform, follow me here. Um, yeah, that might be a way to do it too. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other Twitter related questions or social media related questions because they do seem to be intertwined. Yes, um, this is Glenn. Mm -hmm. And are you going to talk about security? Um, we can go through that. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So you're seeing the Twitter screen again, right? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see from here. Settings and privacy. So let's see. So there, there are so many options and it might be ultimately good to just go through and see what did Twitter do? What did Twitter initially set up? And do I actually want that? Um, privacy and safety. Um, da, 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 da. So mute and block. If someone starts trying to direct message you or keeps adding you on the platform, you don't like them, you can block them. You can, um, go into their account and make them as like, I am blocking this person. So the three little dots on a person's profile or tweet, you can do that. It's like, I'm done. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And that's fine. Um, muted works similarly, um, where you can still follow somebody. So maybe it is a family member and you don't want to unfollow them, but you don't really care about what they're saying. <laughs> so you can mute that account. You can mute um, certain phrases or words or hashtags. So you don't get that. Um, Here's where you can say, I don't want notifications from people I don't follow, or if someone has a new account or you know, things like this. Or um, So it's like, if a bot account is created this morning and it starts immediately trying to spam people, you can say, I don't want a notification from someone who just started an account with a new account. So there are different ways. I it, there are, they keep adding security features. And so it's hard to keep up with all of them. <laughs> um, it's not a bad thing. This is a really good thing. Um, but this is where you can access a lot of that. Um, let's see. Well, I don't want to actually go into there. Let's see. Seeing all the different options they have. Because again, it's been a while since I've had to look through this. <laughs> can I just add that? that yeah. One? While Amanda was presenting, I was trying to figure out if my old Twitter account from 2006 was still there and it wasn't. And so I signed back up and it gave me the choice of either a phone number or an email address to have associated mm. with my account. So if you want to sort of protect your phone number, put your email address in or vice versa, um, that's an option. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, this is an important one for some people. So I access this through your Twitter, your account, your Twitter activity, and then your tweets. So there's many different layers to go through. That's why it's really good to explore this. And there are websites set up. So you can say, you know, what do I need to set on my privacy for Twitter? And it will do a rundown, like news articles get written about this. Um, adding location information to your tweets. Um, some people want to be re remain anonymous. It's like, People may know that I live in Iowa, but they don't need to know exactly where I am in Iowa. So you can add or not add uh, your location information to your tweets. I think we saw in Sam's tweet in my presentation that they were at Terry Trueblood and that's that, that was location tag to say where Sam was when that tweet was made. Um, so that's something I guess to keep in mind, but that's another option for you. Um, Goodness, there are, yeah, there's, there's so many different settings. <laughs> um, let's see. What was I looking for? You can just make it totally private because that might be important for some people. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, was I'm was there something in particular down. that you were thinking about, Glenn, that had you worried? Um, no, um, I'm just paranoid when I don't fully understand something. So I kind of like to ease yeah. into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the best way to do it is just to start very small. And if you have concerns, Google is your best friend. Um, whenever Twitter comes out with a new security feature, there are a multitude of articles that come out explaining the security feature and saying, this might be a great thing to turn on or to turn off. <laughs> Here's why. Here's how to do it. Here's how you find it. Because as you can see, there are many levels of information here um, to go through. A lot of them are password protected and that might be a bit of a burden right now. <laughs> so best thing to do is, yeah, totally sign up. Don't tell anybody that you signed up and just explore what's, what's there, what's available and what you want to share. Um, you... Social media is meant to be social, but you can say how social you are. You don't have to share everything and you shouldn't, you shouldn't either. You, you should keep, stay as private as you need to be. Any other questions or thoughts or concerns? Okay, well, if anything comes up later, um, we will send a follow-up email like we have for the other classes with a survey link and um, feel free to reply to that with um, questions that arise. If you do try Twitter and you need a little extra guidance, um, we'll be happy to try to help with that. Absolutely. Th thanks for doing this program. It's a, it's a good introduction. Excellent. I feel, Thank you. I feel like I know more about what's going on. Good. <laughs> I'm going to think about whether or not I participate, but <laughs> also <laughs> fair enough. An, an cool. overview. Can I just add? So, Amanda, um, it just seems like Twitter is a place that people find and read content. It's probably fine to have an account and be following lots of things, but put out very little or none of Absolutely. your own. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do know a lot of people use Twitter mostly to just take in. Um, information, and they don't necessarily put out much. I would suggest putting out a couple of tweets or liking things just so people know that this is a real person. This is not a bot account. Um, so they don't have to worry about you <laughs> if you follow them. But yeah, a lot of people don't even share that much on Twitter. They might just retweet something. They have no original content. They just retweet things or, or link to articles. Um, and they don't necessarily have to share their private life at all. And it's mostly this is how I get my news. This is how I learn what's going on in my community. This is what I know what's going on in my state, my country. Um, so it's just, that is a very totally valid way of using it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and let us know if you have uh, any other needs. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Thank you.